The case of Ugu is a case of really good public sector provision. Not that everything is perfect in Ugu, there are still significant backlogs and people needing provision, but you have a municipality with a large operating income, committed individuals um, on the municipal side who know the water systems, who've been there for years, and who are, who are busy delivering. But in Ugu they did still have significant problems, both because of the backlogs that they're struggling to address and not having enough funding to address those backlogs, and secondly to deal with bulk systems, that the um, actual bulk systems to provide the water to households are inadequate. In terms of in terms of water sanitation, I mean, we've come a long way since pre-94. Pre-94, there, there was not too much happening uh, in terms of government spend. Uh, a lot of sort of outside spend on, 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 on getting previously disadvantaged areas in terms of water sanitation. Um, but only since 94 did the money start coming in through the water fairs programs, the old um, CMIP or the municipal infrastructure programs. Um, with the advent of then, then what happened was MIG came into effect about uh, four or five years ago. So everything was bundled into MIG. But in terms of, of our area, our area is basically 84% rural and 16% urban, being your, 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 your prime coastal strip. Um, and those are sort of previously advantaged areas that have access to all services. Now, 84% rural, we're still standing in about a 45% backlog. Uh, of water and sanitation. Now, in terms of water, we do proper water supplies. As you can see on the pictures up there, we do. Uh, if there's no, sort of, if it's just a river, we put a dam, a little dam on it. We take run of river. In terms of sanitation, we do, um, we focus on reducing the backlogs. Uh, backlog being people that don't have access to sort of the RDP standard. Uh, and in this case, it's, it's the VIP. We've actually designed our own VIP that basically fits in with the, 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 uh, the government subsidy. Everything is fine, and I'm satisfied about the water. But the problem is so small. Sometimes it's dark, sometimes closed. If you ask what's happening, so, so, the, the, the standpipe, is block uh, is blocked or water is finished so uh, sometimes the, the pipe is blocked yeah, bo. so it's it is, water is finished okay. nothing else but it's fine fine wow the toilet is so bad. If you have a people, don't don't stay like that. Yeah. So I I don't know what's happening in this place. No. no. I don't have right toilets, even my house. Yeah, I toilet climbing. The my cracks. I mean, remember, Ugu has a staff complement this moment of about 700, I think 700 people. Um, and the bulk of that is operations and maintenance. We are wall-to-wall -wall throughout the district, uh, water services authority, water service provider. So, um, yeah, in terms of the, and one must understand that people, people get very really away from this operations and maintenance, the cost of operations and maintenance. My understanding of O&M is that even if you're giving access to free water, it's actually not free, you've got to be paid for somewhere. Um, and the cost of that water uh, is basically including all your operational costs. So effectively, we spend a lot of our equitable share 
on the free basic water. So it, it's, it's a, it's a, to me it's a transfer of funding from equitable share to operations. So I don't think it's much of a, it's not rocket science. You've just got to do the books properly. You've got to understand what is your cost of water and build that accordingly. What we've done across the district is we've actually given everybody access to six kilometers. Uh, I think in terms of the new budget, we're looking at 12 kilolitres because we want to link it to sanit six kilolitres to sanitation, uh, six kilolitres to water. So well, everybody gets that free, that six kilolitres. We just then, in terms of our rand per kilolitre, we cross subsidise the, the free basic water and in terms of the equitable share. <laughs> Two, some say they are dirty. They are not clean. Mm. Hey. But they help us about it. Oh, no toilet here. Yeah? No rooms, house rooms, mm. like you, up to peace. Hey. No room, no road. It's a road. <laughs> road is west. West, 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 west. Road and west. At this point in time, you, you see where, where our backlog figures are. And for us to be able to reduce it by 2014, we need additional funding. We have built up in our capacity in our PMU section. Uh, to be able to implement projects and even double and triple the output they do at the moment. But we don't get enough funding, there's just not enough funding available to be able to install all the services we need to. We've got vast rural areas, some people call it deep rural areas, and to be able to reach these people, it, it takes a lot of money. Uh, we're spending on average at the moment 21,000 rand per household to get water to a house where areas like Hateng spends five to six thousand. So it's, it's much more expensive getting the water to the people. Water Affairs recently or last year started a, a rain harvesting project. Maybe we can get that going as well. It will help us a lot in reaching the deep rural people, at least because of our high rainfall. They will have water for most of, most of the year. The rainwater harvesting project, we've done a pilot project recently. We've installed a few rainwater harvesting systems. It's more just consists of a, this one was specially designed for our area, but it will work in most rural areas. We've got the Rondal structures. They've designed a flexible gutter system that you can fit to a Rondalva. For most of the time, the ones that we've installed within two weeks, they've had water and they've had water ever since for the last, I don't know, many months. And the only challenge we have at this stage is that everybody else wants it as well. Participatory processes were a significant part of Water Dialogue's research. We decided to use participatory video in Ugu so people could tell their own story. A participatory video specialist trained local community members in creating storyboards and doing video, and it had a range of positive spin-offs, post-water dialogues for the people who were trained. Exactly as long a righty, a clean, a good condition, a key of a strong. Now, Gabela Bangi now by Caesar, Pnapo Macrana, who has Sunday toilets, Mifunu is Caesar and Abunzinjan. Yes, you mean Angna, the toilets, the Mount Funu is Caesar, the Gingsati, Ike, Jangi, Ben, Pinde, Kabuba, and Amanda.